Dylan Larkin is your 37th captain of the Detroit Red Wings Hockey Club. He grew up in Waterford Township, Michigan. He is a Wolverine, a Michigan man. He works hard and skates fast. He leads by example, and with a bit of Irish luck, delivers for this team when it matters most. On any given night at Little Caesars Arena, you can find hundreds of sweaters with the last name Larkin on their backs. It represents for many the dream of playing for the hometown team. And now he wears a C on his chest, just like 36 other men did before him. This is his story. Our hometown hero, our captain, Dylan Larkin. Welcome, hockey fans, back to Little Caesars Arena. A year ago, we announced Dylan Larkin as the captain of the Detroit Red Wings, the 37th captain. We did not get a chance due to COVID to celebrate that moment, but we're here to do that tonight. And several former captains have joined us to celebrate number 37. This season opening night this year was was very special, something that I didn't expect. The last two captains of the Detroit Red Wings, number five, Nicholas Lidstrom, number 40, Henrik Zetterberg. I was very surprised to see them and, and uh, you know, obviously they took a lot of time to fly from Sweden to, to come here and I can't uh, express how much that meant to me. It was, it was a truly a special night. Dylan Larkin, the newest Red Wing captain. I'm Denise Larkin, Dylan's mom. I'm Kevin Larkin. Dylan's dad, and this is Sully. Dylan's brother. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Dylan's brother. <laughs> when Dylan was a kid, I think hockey really helped him burn off a lot of energy. He was a very high energy kid and uh, made a ton of friends that he still knows and is very close to today. You know, he was very passionate about hockey and his cousins, they were big into playing hockey as well. So whatever they did, he had to do. And we had another startup kind of rollerblade and no, he didn't want that. He wanted the one his brother was using and they're uh, like two sizes bigger, but on he, uh, we put them on him and off he went. Uh, I was amazed, you know, pacifier in his mouth and he's uh, regular rollerblading down the sidewalk. It, it, it was crazy. Yeah, it was pretty annoying uh, having him always following me. Uh, no, it, it was great. Like, we were pretty tight growing up and probably led to more fights than my mom wanted, but uh, it was good and it was, it was just a lot of love that we have for each other. Every family gathering seemed to, to be around, around a, a hockey game or watching Coach's Corner. We've always just been playing hockey, whether it was roller hockey in the street or pond hockey on the lakes. Uh, any chance we could get out there, we, we would, and bring the shovels and, and get after it and just pass it around or play one-on-one -on -one games. So we were definitely spending our fair share of time on the, the ponds in Waterford. You know, I just remember uh, at an early age going out there and, and skating with, with uh, the adults and, and, and trying to keep up with them and just, just moving the puck and, and uh, laughing and, and, and having a great time. Dylan skated in this rink uh, when we first moved here and it was like November and it just froze over. We didn't realize it's 20 feet deep right here. Like we were thinking, ah, oh, it's shallow and you know, no big deal. It didn't fall through, so. We've had like three Christmases that uh, we've had father and son games out here and uh, the, you know, the, a lot of great memories with, the, with that pond and Christmas day in particular. Yeah. 
I watch from inside. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame me. I have the hot chocolate going inside, yeah. but yeah, it is, they have a great time and they're usually laughing and you know just having a great time. And as usual, Dylan being pro or not, he's still out there, the last one, first on the ice and the last off. I think I was like 12 years old when we, when we became friends. Uh, we started playing together on Bell Tire and um, just kind of had that friendship ever since. Hey YouTube, it's uh, D-Boss and E.G. Slayer here. Uh, I was on his team when that video came out and I remember thinking it was the funniest thing ever. I was kind of jealous I wasn't in the video. I'm about to put up a snip show and it's about to get hot and spicy. You ready my boy E.G. Slayer? We wanted it to go viral then, you know, and, and it ended up happening, what, eight, nine, ten years later. I guess, no, I'm not jealous. I was, I, I'm happy I wasn't in that video because it came out, so that's Dylan in a nutshell. Yeah, I, I do say, you know, when I talk to kids, you gotta, you gotta be careful what you put out there because it, it, uh, it always comes, it always comes back, funny thing about the internet. One, two, three, let's, let's have fun. fun. When Dylan was looking at colleges, he um, went to a few different ones. We went to Yoast and it just the, the energy and the passion the fans had, the, the building itself, how historic it is. It was, I, I think, five minutes into the game, I was like, Dad, I, I'm, I'm going to come, come to school here. And If you go in the rink and you're a Division One coach, you're looking for the best players in the game. and uh, and. Of course, every game I saw Dylan play, uh, he was one of the best players in the game. I mean, he just jumped out at you as a player that wanted, you know, he wanted to do well. He wanted to do better than everybody else. I uh, called uh, Coach Berenson that week and, and uh, got to break the news to him. And, and uh, I hope he smiled. It, it didn't seem like it on the phone, but uh, I think he did a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I was roommates with him at Michigan and um, you know, living with somebody is totally different than just being friends with them, and uh, we had our battles for sure as roommates, as teammates. You know, a lot of a lot of nights where we'd lay there and just not even talk to each other, kind of like a relationship almost. It was weird. You know, he was an 18-year-old kid coming in, and, and I was a senior, and, and Red always wanted the seniors to, to be leaders, and, and for me. You know, I wanted to make sure that he was as comfortable as possible because he was such a great player and, and, and such a good good friend. We, we developed a great relationship. I think the experience that Zach Hyman had really helped a young rookie come in and, and kind of manage his own game and manage his emotions. You know, we had some great games and, and great memories that, that, uh, that uh, we made there together. He made the most of his first year at Michigan and his only year at in college hockey. I remember just sitting around all day anxiously waiting and I probably got ready at like three o'clock to put my suit on and sat around for another couple hours till it was time to go. So it was, it was a lot of waiting. I remember sitting in the hotel room and my dad uh, did a mock draft, you know, like his his thoughts, and and uh, he had me way too high, of course. All the work's done by the time you get to the draft, you know, like it's it's done. Uh, your list is is complete. the The reason why you do that is you want to take the emotion out of of what's going to happen on on the first round at, at the NHL entry draft. Rather interesting. Anaheim kept. Uh calling them back, you know, for meetings, and they were picking tents, so we're, I'm going, Anaheim, geez, West Coast, uh, I mean, 10, 30 games, we'll miss them all, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I was like, Dad, just anywhere would be cool, and... But what changed, there was a trade, Ryan Kessler was traded from Vancouver to Anaheim. And then it was like, okay, we've got a certain amount of picks more till Detroit, and then it was just kind of, kind of counting them down. 11, 12, 13, the Dallas Stars picked before us, and that was Jim Nill's first year with the Dallas Stars, and obviously I knew the entire scouting staff, three or four members of, of the Red Wing amateur staff that ended up going to Dallas. The frustrating thing is, 
Sometimes you put these names on the list and, and you have no chance at all to get them on draft night. You know, and, and to be honest with you, we weren't quite sure if, if Dylan Larkin was going to be there as well. The Dallas Stars are pleased to select from the Western Hockey League Swift Current Broncos, Julius Honka. Train Red Wings select from the U.S. National Development Program and Admission, Dylan Larkin. He was selected from his hometown to the team that he dreamed of, of playing for. And you can only imagine all these, you know, in, in the, what is there, 215, 216 names that are selected. You know, to hear my name called and, and uh, to feel that excitement, to be in front of that many people for the, for the first time. He was uh, uh, a dream come true. You know, we selected, you know, a heck of a hockey player and, and a future captain of the Detroit Red Wings. And, you know, those are all the intangibles that, that we talked about uh, over that year. Did you wake up this morning thinking that you'd be putting on a red wing sweater by the end of the day? No, I didn't. I really, I wanted to, but, but uh, I didn't know, so I'm, I'm really happy though. The decision to stay at Michigan or, or decide to turn pro was very difficult. We, we knew that Dylan would, you know, he's a first round pick. He's, He's a highlight reel player and uh, he's played well at every level. You know, we can't expect him to stay four years necessarily. Uh, he loved Michigan and it was a hard decision for him, but I think he was really excited about the next step. I was actually as surprised as everyone else. I didn't know which way he was going to go because he was just torn both ways of what to do. I love to play hockey and I, I thought, you know, whether I was, uh, you know, in Grand Rapids or um, you know, here obviously I knew signing with the team, they, they liked a lot of the young players to play in Grand Rapids for a few years and, and I was okay with that because I just wanted to wake up and, and play hockey and, and have it as my job and you know, I was so excited to, to be a professional hockey player. I remember when Dylan Larkin first started playing in the preseason games in his first year, and the coaching staff, every game that he played, they tried to put him in adverse situations, and he just kept responding by being successful. Preseason had ended, and I also hadn't heard when practice was Monday, so I, I was kind of, Sunday I was like, well, this is interesting. Do I show up at practice or, you know, so. He earned a spot on this club and he started his first game against the Toronto Maple Leafs in the regular season opener. And forward, Dylan Larkin. You know, he has great speed. He's tenacious on the puck. He's a great playmaker, can shoot it. Um, he's got all the intangibles and his hockey IQ is off the charts. The period had just started and it was a, it was a four on four and you know I, I just tried to get as much speed as possible and uh, Henrik got the puck in the middle and you know he got the puck on my stick and I just looked up and saw a huge opening in the top of the net and you're just like my mind is just blown by this moment. Yeah, just, just what a feeling that, that was. I'm very honored to, to be the captain of the Detroit Red Wings. I'll try my best to be a, a leader every day on and off the ice for my teammates, for the city. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited. So uh, thank you guys for being here again and, and go ahead with your questions. Unfortunately, it was not, not the ideal way to sit down where we sat in my office down here in the locker room and I think we both had our masks on and uh, I don't even know if we were allowed to shake hands at that point, but just let him know these were my thoughts and uh, he was ready to be the captain and thought he was the right choice and wished him good luck. He told me at 14 that I would be lucky enough to play in the NHL, I'd probably call you crazy, you know, and, and then to be with the Red Wings and uh, you know play here and at home and, and be the captain is is just something that uh, you know I would have never never imagined but uh, you know I'm very very lucky and, and very uh, 
happy it, it, it turned out that way. I think I kind of found out on Twitter, I like, saw it come in, I, I, they had an announcement to make and I assumed it was going to be captain for Dylan. Uh, he's kind of always had that in him, that, that leadership quality, just the way he plays, how hard he plays and like I said a little, little jealous almost because I was a Red Wings fan growing up but uh, obviously I have my own career now and I'm happy in Columbus but it's, uh, it's awesome to see. It didn't come as a surprise to me when Dylan Larkin was named captain. I, I thought out of all the players on the team he was best suited for that role and his leadership qualities are second to none. I think Dylan, first of all, just took really good care of me. I stayed with him the first couple weeks. We uh, went out for dinners, we went golfing, we played tennis together. He's the captain and he, he just like everyone, takes good care of the guys and forming a, forming a relationship off the ice usually translates pretty good on the ice. That's why you probably sacrifice your, yourself every single night to just go um, the extra step and hopefully make this team really successful. Hey, welcome to Tim Hortons. How may I take your order? 161. Okay, that was my one talking. Sure, gotcha. To Toby. <laughs> oh, we forgot to put his order in though. He just wanted a donut. Pick up a new thing every year. <laughs> He's always kind of had a leaning towards um, thinking of others and, and people, um, you know, or helping out with charities. It all starts with your captain, and if he's terrific in the community, other players follow. A big reminder I've had in my career of, of what the game of hockey is all about is when we've had our chance to do the, the Larkin Hockey School. It was really something awesome that we did and got to engage with a lot of young hockey players in you know, Waterford or our community and there's kids coming from all over the country. You know, he wants to make a difference, he wants to be a part of this community. Uh, he's from here, he understands what it means to be a Red Wing and, and help out and... Doing that in the community to see other people and how it, it benefits them, you know, means, means a lot more. On March 1st, 2023, Dylan Larkin was rewarded with an eight-year contract extension, ensuring that he will be leading the team on the ice for the years to come. I really uh, believe the, the future is bright here and I always wanted to be a part of it and always dreamed of, you know, ever since I came into the league of playing my whole career here and, and, uh, and being a part of this. You know, I have this vision of Dylan as a freshman and, and now he's the captain of the Red Wings. Dylan Larkin is his own product of his own, his family, his upbringing, his hard work his passion for the game. How could I not be proud of my brother and being coming the captain of the Red Wings? The journey and it's all, I, I've, I've relied on a lot of people and, and I can't thank them enough for the support and helping me get here and, and uh, also the support in the, the hard times. I, I really look at the big picture and look at the future and I think it's going to make it that much better and sweeter when, when we, we really get to the end goal of, of winning the Stanley Cup.